biggest problem the flat earth community was facing was to crack the code of the heaven. The heliocentric model supporters had a very valid argument with claiming their model had an ironclad predictive system. And regardless of what many flat earthers believe, astronomers over the last 100 years have not been looking with their eyes closed. Most professional and amateur astronomers have always tried to find a new discovery to either change the current paradigm or confirm certain aspects. To give an example of the predictive capabilities of the mathematical prediction system that is the heliocentric system, astrophotographers can look up coordinates in the sky for objects like star clusters, nebulas, or galaxies, for lack of a better term, which are completely invisible to the naked eye and high-power telescopes. Then they open the aperture for a long time, and when done, long enough, and in the right color range filters, the objects become perfectly visible. Something every flat earther has to realize is that there wouldn't be a market for trackers or telescopes if their model was incorrect in that regard. Instead of trying to find holes in its algorithms used to predict, we as a community should embrace the fact and be thankful for all the hard work that has been done for us. What we are doing here is simply applying their algorithms and build those on top of a physical construct to make the concept not only a real possibility, but considering the fact that modern astronomy is already shifting towards the electric universe model, this flat electromagnetic model is far better explainable and provable than the current hypothesis, that being the Newtonian or Einsteinian universe. In short, the argument that there is no flat earth model and that they can't predict is out the door. The burden of proof now lies on both camps to empirically verify which one is correct, like demanding the ball supporters prove empirically that the sun is 93 million miles away in a burning ball of plasma versus proving it's an electromagnetic projection. And since we have been getting the excuse a lot that spectral analysis shows hydrogen and helium, that will not count since the light of the sun is just interacting with the top layers in the atmosphere, which by density gradient would be, you guessed it, hydrogen and helium. Back to the model. In our current setup, we have the sun moving in a perfect circle around the observer. This is done by placing the objective sun at an equal distance from the observer. But based on angular size change and the speed of azimuth and declination, the sun has all kinds of variations in its path. The time and position data is correct, but it is our consensus that the actual sun remains at a constant rate of speed. Therefore, the observed speed changes, which are equal but opposite north and south, must be created by the dimensions of the field itself changing. This is also expected as electromagnetic field lines will change dimensions when another charge source is in its vicinity. To solve this problem, and therefore create a perfect layout of the field lines, we have to make the speed changes and angular size changes based on distance created or lost by the objective object giving a 3D perspective of the path. To do this, we assume that the source object has a fixed orbit at a constant speed all year round and that the season changes are created by the current change in the field. So between each time increment, the objective sun must travel an equal distance in 3D space. That is the formula that we seek to create, a visual of the movement of one field line as well as the motion of the entire field. Thanks for watching.